All right, and we back. I don't think I've done one of these since after week two, and we just did, what, I believe week six or week five. So it's been a while. We're going to talk a lot about college football. I got a lot of notes right here, so you're going to see me looking this way a lot. Yeah, at the end of the day, college football has been a roller coaster. We saw a lot of SEC teams rise to the top of the standings, only after this week to fall to, you know, the, the 8 to 15 range, and even farther for some teams. But let's get into it. We got a lot to talk about. I'm going to do one to three things about, out about probably like 100 games. I got a lot. I got 17 pages of notes right here. I'm going to make it as quick as I can because this video is already probably going to be 20 minutes long, if not longer. Um, yeah. So, I mean, let's, I mean, Arizona State, Texas State, we're going all the way back to week three, right? Both teams are much better than people anticipated. Next day, we saw Arizona play Kansas State. Arizona's offense has a long way to go. They put up seven points, I think it was seven points on the road at Kansas State. That's brutal. On the flip side, Kansas State's defense has been much better than people anticipated, and they're going to be a tough out in the Big 12 as they've continued to be. Alabama, Wisconsin, and Ryan Williams is going to be the next great Alabama receiver. The kid's a stud. We're going to talk more about him down the line, trust me. Oklahoma State, Tulsa, Oklahoma State bounced back after a really rough showing against Arkansas. They did win that game. They kind of throttled Tulsa. Since then, they've done a whole lot of nothing. Talk more about that in a minute, but shout out to them for being Tulsa. LSU, South Carolina. LSU, South Carolina got screwed by the refs. There's no other way to put it. It was just a ref show. It was brutal. I feel so bad for South Carolina fans. It's so tough to win in the SEC and just to have that game pulled from out from under them. That's tough. Arkansas State, Michigan, Davis Warren, bad. Michigan's offense is atrocious. Alex Orgy doesn't look like the guy. Davis Warren doesn't look like the guy. We saw Jack Tuttle this past week. He doesn't look like anything. It's tough. Boston College, Missouri. It was the game of the week in week three. Boston College is the real deal. I know they lose this game. Um, I believe they're five and one at this point, or maybe four and two. I don't know if, I actually don't know if they lost to Virginia this past week. Um, I thought Missouri was going to challenge for the SEC title after this game. Their defense has left a little bit to be desired, but they're, it's tough because I really think Missouri is better than this past weekend against Texas A&M. I don't know if they're going to make the playoff, let alone host a playoff game, but they just have to be more consistent, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Oregon played Oregon State in the Civil War. I know they like to call it whatever the fuck they like to call it now, but it's the Civil War. It's Oregon's by a mile. Like, it's really not even close. Like, Oregon dominates that game. I hope with this new Pac-12 that we've got going on or, you know, it's still being developed, I'm hoping that the Pac-12 can kind of find its form, become a true Power 5 conference again, and Oregon State can kind of become more of a rival. But for now, it's Oregon's. Tulane, in Oklahoma, Jackson Arnold needs to figure it out. Obviously, he got benched for Michael Hawkins, but... There has to be some sort of talent there. I don't understand how he just collapsed. I wasn't sold on him coming into this season, but I definitely did not expect him to be as bad as he's been. Notre Dame, Purdue. Purdue couldn't tackle my grandma. Notre Dame, Riley Leonard ran all over them. I mean, Purdue just has to get better. I think they're one and four at the time of this recording. They got Oregon, I believe, this week on a short week. It's going to be tough. Utah, Utah State, Utah needs Cam Rising back. We've seen that as the season has progressed. We're going to talk more about that later, but they need Cam Rising back. In regards to Miami, Ball State, Miami, Cam Ward's going to win the Heisman. I mean, like, the way that this season is progressing, he just led them in a miraculous comeback against Cal. I think they put up 63 against Ball State. I mean, like, what do you need? Ole Miss, Wake Forest, it was not a good game. Wake Forest literally paid Ole Miss a million dollars to not play the game next year. Wake Forest, they need to rebuild bad. It's brutal out there. UTSA, Texas, I mean, Arch Manning's going to be a problem. He has played fantastic football in relief for Quinn Ewers. Quinn Ewers should be back this week against Oklahoma, but Arch Manning's going to be a problem next year. Georgia, Kentucky, obviously, we saw Georgia in their following matchups. They don't look like a national championship contender. They, and if they do, it's because of the highs and not the consistency that we've come to expect from the Georgia Bulldogs. Northern Illinois, Nebraska. Excuse me, not Northern Illinois, Northern Iowa. Dylan Royola is an absolute stud. I understand he's a true freshman. I understand they kind of laid an egg against Illinois in their game. I'll talk about that in a minute. But he's a stud. He's a true freshman. He's only going to continue to get better. Matt Rule has a gem on his hands. And then Kent State, Tennessee, Nico, Nico Iamaliava legitimately might win multiple Heisman Trophy wins. He, he legitimately might win multiple Heismans. Like, he is so fucking good. It's unreal. I know they've kind of laid offensive eggs the last two weeks, but I still think he's, again, he's a true, I don't even know, he's not a true freshman. He's a redshirt freshman, but he's only played like five games. Like, he's going to continue to get better. He's an absolute dog. Moving on to week four, we'll talk about some more Sunbelt stuff. South Alabama, App State. Listen, South Alabama kind of blew the shit out of that pause. But the App State student section had fun. It was a cool game to watch. It was a mudslide, but South Alabama ran away with that game. Illinois, Nebraska. I just alluded to Nebraska. Illinois is better than anyone anticipated. I don't think they have a top. I don't think they have a top 15 team ceiling, but I think they can float in that 20 to 25 range, or maybe pushed up to 17, 18 um, toward the end of the year. Again, Dylan Royal is still a true freshman, but I still think Illinois is going to win like nine games. 
and, and even more, I, I'm going to talk at the end of this about the top 25 teams um, right now. Illinois is obviously in there. I think I have them pegged at 9-3, and three, kind of a to- spoiler alert. But, yeah, Marshall, Ohio State, not much to take away from this game, man. Ohio State's a wagon. And, and it's weird enough because there's so much hype around these SEC teams that we're really not talking at all about Ohio State or really even Oregon. I know Oregon's a little shaky. But Ohio State, I'm going to mention this later, they're kind of the best team that nobody's talking about. NC State Clemson, we're going to continue to see it. Clemson might have figured it out. They're, Kate Klubnick and that offense are scoring at an elite clip. I think in three games, like 12 or 16 touchdowns, and then like maybe one interception, like scored like 55 points a game or 53 points a game, or whatever it is. They're playing at a really high level. Again, comp hasn't been there, but we really worried about them after the Georgia game. They've done nothing but dispel that notion as of late. Arkansas State, Iowa State. Iowa State played a complete dominant four quarters of football in a wide open Big 12. They look like the front runners. There's a couple of the teams that obviously anything can happen. We're still not even halfway through the season, but they look really good. Georgia Tech, Syracuse. Obviously, Kyle McCord transfers from Ohio State to Syracuse. He was a fantastic hit for that program. They look really good. There's a lot of life in that program for the first time in a long time. Georgia Tech, again, under Brent Key, just needs to continue to improve defensively. They're not a bad team, but that's where their deficiencies lie right now. And I think Syracuse is going to compete for the ACC title. I know there's a lot of teams in the ACC. Obviously, you've seen Miami. We've seen Clemson kind of make a resurgence. We still have... um, you know, SMU, Pitt, Louisville's, I mean, they're kind of out of it now, but Syracuse is still there lurking. And I know the ACC, again, we thought it was going to be Florida State Clemson, but there's a lot of teams that are much better than advertised this season. Talking about Kent State, Penn State, I mean, there's really one takeaway from this is Tyler Warren's the best tight end in college football, and I don't think it's particularly close. USC, Michigan, USC is going to be fine. I mean, I know they actually kind of just laid an egg against Minnesota, but Minnesota is not a bad team. It's tough to win on the road in the Big Ten. We're starting to see that more and more. Michigan still has to figure out the QB spot, right? Like they did win the game and they won with only 32 passing yards, which is very impressive to finding a way to win that game, but it, you're just not going to win nine games this season if your team is is re- this reliant on your defense and your run game. Like you're just going to put ten in the box and dare the fucking student that you pull out of the student section to play quarterback for you to win that game. Notre Dame, they took on Miami of Ohio. They need to figure out the passing attack, right? Like Riley Leonard has run all over teams, but eventually they're just legitimately going to put eight, seven in the box, and it's going to be really, really hard. To, to score and to move the ball. Georgia Tech, Louisville. Um, Louisville, I mean, at, at times they look like a real ACC contender. It's tough. The ACC is kind of wide open. Obviously, Florida State sucks. Clemson has had their downs. We've seen it. Miami, especially as of late, has been really shaky. Um, but at the end of the day, I think Louisville has a chance to, if they can kind of get back on track down the stretch, they have a slightly easier schedule than most teams realize. I think they can get, make a run at the ACC championship. Buffalo and Northern Illinois. First of all, the Northern Illinois hype is gone. I know they took down UMass this past weekend, but it's kind of crazy that they were able to beat Notre Dame on the road then just the week after lose to Buffalo at home. Buffalo's defense is legit. I know um, we've seen them play Missouri, and Missouri kind of sandblasted them, but I honestly think Buffalo might win the MAC. And the MAC is the most wide open conference, I think, in college football. Them or Conference USA, but yeah. Uh, Buffalo's going to be a t- tough team to beat in the MAC. Utah, Oklahoma State. We talked about Utah. Cam Rising needs to get healthy. He needs to get healthy. Oklahoma State, on the flip side of things, they need to figure out the offense, right? And their offense, their team has been so inconsistent this entire season, and it's going to kill them in more games, as we'll talk about. But Utah's not going to win nine games without Cam Rising. Like, they're just not. These two teams are so similar, and it's so weird to think about that these were two of the teams that we thought were going to win, maybe potentially the Big 12 would even host a playoff game. Vanderbilt, Missouri, obviously we know about what Vanderbilt did the past week, but Vanderbilt almost upset Missouri last week. Um, Brock Taylor, their kicker, he had a 57-yard field goal in the game. I think it was, I believe, just on the half, and then missing one from 31 yards to tie the game double overtime. Just brutal. I mean, just brutal. You feel it for the kid. I'm really glad Vanderbilt got the win. They were a team that's on the rise. Diego Pavia, absolute nil. We'll talk more about Vanderbilt later, but yeah. I mean, Missouri escape of the win, Vanderbilt, they're looking good. Miami, Miami, South Florida. Uh, Miami's the best team in Florida by a mile. There's really not much else to say. UCF stinks. Um, Florida sucks. South Florida is, again, probably the second best team in Florida, but Miami's the best team by a mile. Tennessee, Oklahoma. Tennessee wasn't as explosive as usual on offense, but they found a way to win, which is huge. Oklahoma's offense needs to kickstart. I mean, like, they, they, they look brutal. Jackson Arnold, I don't know what's going on down in Norman, but this schedule does not get any easier, so they have to figure it out. For Tennessee, being able to lean on the defense was a huge boost. Josh Eibel's teams, especially in the last two years, have not been able to do that. This team was, right? It's not like, again, as much as I'm sure the Oklahoma offense struggling isn't all on the Tennessee defense, I'm sure I know the Tennessee defense had a big impact in that. And that's a huge, great look for Tennessee. Bowling Green, Texas A&M, uh, this past weekend is going to dispel what I was going to say, but Marcel Reed, if, t- if Connor Weaving does get hurt again, he is a stud. He's going to be fine. He can win you games. He can keep you in games. Texas A&M would be fine with him playing quarterback. Obviously, Connor Weaving came back and had a hell of a game. Texas A&M is going to be in a much better spot than people realize. Ole Miss against Georgia Southern. I know they laid a stinker against Kentucky. Kentucky seems to be really good at bogging teams down. Um, I think Ole Miss is still going to make the playoffs. I think they legitimately have a chance to make 
a playoff hosting berth. I don't think they're winning the SEC. I think it's going to be one of Texas, Georgia, Alabama. I just think those three teams have separated themselves, but I think Ole Miss is still going to make the playoffs. UL Monroe, Texas. Listen, I, I know I talked about Nikola Aliava winning multiple Heisman's. I think Arch is going to win the Heisman next year. He's so good. So good. Like, he just, I, I just, watching him play the game, he's clearly, he's an elite quarterback. He would be a starter on, I would probably say, 80% of teams right now. Kansas State, BYU, this was the nightcap. This was a brutal game for Kansas State. If you're Kansas State, you put this one behind you as fast as you can. Burn the tape. You forget about it. They did just that. For me, I watched a lot of BYU games. It's fun to watch BYU. They do play in the late slate, so it's like easier to watch them because there's not necessarily as many high-level games going on. No offense, BYU. But this was the most dominant win against a good team I've seen by a BYU team ever. Like, legitimately ever. I'm not saying it's the most impressive win by a BYU team I've ever seen, but it was definitely the most eye-opening dominant you controlled the game in all three facets for four quarters and to me they're a dark horse contender for the big 12 as we've seen we started to realize that the big 12 is way more wide open than we thought and every team seems to lay eggs left right and center if they can continue to play well i think they have a legit shot to win the big 12 army temple i mean there's really not much to take away from this on the temple side but the army navy game this year is going to be incredible virginia tech miami again we're talking a lot about the refs in these games but virginia tech got screwed by the refs there's nothing else i can say about that game it was ridiculous Kentucky Ole Miss, Kentucky deserved to win this game. I, I'm so happy they pulled it off. Ole Miss needs to stop worrying about fucking vacant injuries and just play football. And Kentucky legitimately might have one of the best defenses in the country, let alone the SEC. They have stopped Georgia. They've stopped Ole Miss. They're playing great football. Minnesota took on Michigan. Again, Michigan wins this game, but their inability to play full four quarters of football is going to prevent them from being a real contender. It's, it's unreal how up and down this team is. Oklahoma State, Kansas State. Oklahoma State has a lot of problems they need to figure out, right? Obviously, Ali Gordon's been incredible, but Alan Bowman hasn't done really much anything this year. Avery Johnson, however, is playing amazing football. And Kansas State, to me, I think they're going to win the Big 12. And if they don't, they're going to be right in the mix. BYU, Baylor. BYU needs to get healthy in the running back room fast. I mean, their whole team are getting littered with injuries. They played a great football game, and they managed to hold on to win that game against Baylor on the road. But they really need to get healthy, and they really need to get healthy fast. Wisconsin came to the Coliseum take on USC. And again, USC's defense has been the difference maker this season. They have a real defense in Southern California for the first time in Lincoln Riley's tenure. Not as explosive on offense. We'll get to that later. But again, the defense has continued to be the difference. Louisville Notre Dame. This was an actually incredible game. Louisville needs to continue to cut down on turnovers. They lost this game because of the turnovers. Riley Leonard started to figure out the passing attack, played better. And I think they're going to make the playoffs just because I don't think their schedule is that tough, right? We thought Florida State was going to be good. I would like to see Army and Navy continue to play at the level they're at before I really consider them contenders. <sighs> Whoever plays Notre Dame is going to sandblast them. Oklahoma, Auburn. Oklahoma snuck by Auburn. Michael Hawkins, I believe this was his first game of this season. First game of his career as a true freshman. They continue to struggle offensively, but they just have to figure it out if they want to be a contender. They have, again, I talked about this last time. I legitimately think they have the toughest schedule in the country if it's not Florida. Their SEC schedule still remaining, starting this upcoming week with Texas, is unreal. Arkansas A&M. A&M sneaks out of here with a win. Arkansas's defensive line got destroyed in this game. That's the reason Texas A&M was able to sneak out of here with a win. Arkansas played great in all other facets of the game in terms of holding A&M down, playing you know methodical offense, but that defensive line got cooked. Mississippi State, Texas, not much to take away from this that we haven't already talked about. Texas, uh, they're going to be fine as you know without Quinn Ewers. They are not going to win a national championship without him, but they're going to be fine playing certain teams as long as he continues to recover from injury. Stanford took on Clemson. I mean, we talked about this earlier. Clemson, they have turned their season around fast. I don't know if Georgia is just that much better than Clemson, but Clemson has gone on an absolute tear since then, absolutely demolishing teams. Iowa State took on Houston. Really wasn't much to talk about in this game. The best part about this game was the announcers. Iowa State absolutely obliterated Houston, but, you know, that's what we come to expect. Houston kind of sucks. So, and next up, I want to talk about the game of the year, Georgia-Alabama. I mean, if you didn't watch this or see the highlights, you're missing out. Georgia-Alabama. I still think Georgia's a national season contender. I know I talked about their inability to play consistent football at a high level. I mean, they're still Georgia. I still believe in Kirby Smart and the staff. Carson Beck is a Heisman candidate for a reason. They have pieces all over the field. I think Alabama's, you know, up until this past week was my pick to win the national championship. I think the SEC is loaded with elite teams, right? I think, you know, obviously Bama, Georgia, Texas, you know, Ole Miss. I think they're just, the SEC is so deep that it's so tough to win anywhere. But this was the game of the year, right? Ryan Williams touchdown. The kid is incredible. The kid is incredible. He's so good. I'm literally getting draft picks in my dynasty leagues so I can get him. <laughs> like, he's so good. He's 17. Next up, Ohio State, Michigan State. Not to be overshadowed, Jeremiah Smith. He has a chance. I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not saying this. I, I didn't say this about Ryan Williams. Not because I don't believe it, but I think Alabama has a much deeper core in terms of what I'm about to say. I think no, no BS. Jeremiah Smith has a chance to be the best Ohio State receiver ever. Ever. He's that good, and he's being overshadowed by Ryan Williams. But he's so good. Illinois took on Penn State. Illinois has 
questions offensively. Again, they're just the, – the lack of explosiveness. They play Big Ten West football, and it's just really tough once they go down to win games. Penn State's defense is legit. They're going to make the playoffs. I don't think they win the Big Ten. I think either Ohio State or Oregon does. Um, but – I still think they're a top three team in the Big Ten. And in, in this season, I don't think they play Oregon, so I think they're probably going to go like 11-1 and one, as long as they can avoid a misstep, and that's a, that's a playoff team. Uh, South Alabama took on LSU. Not much takeaway from this game. LSU played a pretty solid game. Caden Durham on LSU, the running back, stud. He's going to be something special in the coming years. Washington State, Boise State, there's one takeaway from this game. One takeaway from this game. I'll talk about him down the line. Ashton Janey is the best running back in college football. He, he, I mean, I don't want to say he's the best player, just because, and, and I know the hype on this is kind of insane, but Travis Hunter is doing what he's doing on both sides of the ball. But he's easily the best true offensive player and the best running back in college football. Arizona took on Utah. Cam Rising needs to get healthy. I've said it every single time I've talked about Utah. Arizona finding a way to win this game while leading on its defense, great sign. Great sign. And a wide open Big 12. Arizona has a chance to make a run. Obviously, Ted Aroa, McMillan, Nate Novafita. Yeah, I mean, it's Big 12 is such a roller coaster. It's, it's fun. It's a terrible if you're a big 12 team fan because you never know if you're going to win or lose but yeah it's it's going to be it's going to be a fun race on the stretch and then finally week five oregon took on ucla ucla needs to get back to basis man they 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 just they just can't do anything right now their their team is undisciplined oregon came in there and just they slept walked through that game and still annihilated them all right our final week week six the week that just happened I'll start with sam houston utep i think sam houston's going to make this conference usa championship they look legit uh, I started to watch Conference USA games. They're going to actually start doing Tuesday, Wednesday this week, which is actually super exciting. I'm excited for that. I think Sam Houston's going to win the Conference USA Championship. They, it's either them or Liberty, and Liberty's schedule is, you know, I could go out there and play for some of the teams they play. So I think Sam Houston's the real deal. Uh, Michigan State, Oregon. Michigan State's in shambles. Like, they're in shambles. Like, that, I don't know. It, I know it's year one of a theoretical rebuild. I might forget the coach's name. He came from Oregon State. Um, but it, it's just, it's sad to see where it's far. I mean, they were like a top 10 team like three years ago when uh, Kenneth Walker was there. It's just so sad to see how far this program's fallen. Syracuse UNLV was actually a really fun game to watch. The Quinn Allen is a stud. Stud, dud, dud, dud. I've already talked about Kyle McCord. Uh, USC, you're, excuse me, not USC, UNLV and the refs, ref show, gave Syracuse way too many chances. In the overtime, that... That final drive, or that final, uh, how do I want to phrase this? That final, like, you know, they, they had two different penalties on plays that UNLV backed Syracuse up. Syracuse, they're a dark horse ACC contender. I know I talked about them. I know the ACC is a little deeper than we expected. Obviously, we've seen Pitt and SMU kind of come out of nowhere. Um, Miami's been pretty good all season. Clemson has kind of f- figured it out. But I think Syracuse, if we're not careful, there's a chance they're in Charlotte in December. UCLA took on Penn State. I mean, Penn State consistently controlled this game. Penn State, like, they're a program that they never seem to blow teams out you know you don't see a 70 to 7 game you see a lot of 35 7 42 7 45 nothing and those are dominant games and that's just how they play the game they play really methodical football and i love what they got going on over there missouri a&m this was a shocker missouri is not as good as anybody thought uh it is tough to win at kyle field it's, it's a bitch of a place to play a&m the aggies are much better than people are realizing um texas a&m is lucky to have mike elko i know that hire was called into question when it happened um he's got them rolling I don't, they're going to go, they're going to go bowling, right? I don't think they've gone bowling in the last couple of years. It's really cool to see that. And I really think, I don't think AM's going to make a push at the playoff berth, at least not this season. But the 12th man, I definitely think they have a chance to play spoiler to some other SEC title pushes. The last game of the season, Texas comes to town. Texas, they play a tough schedule. They still have to play Georgia. You can't, you tell me they lose that last game. That doesn't push them out of the SEC championship and maybe allow someone else to slip in if they lose to Georgia. You never know. SMU took on Louisville. This was a game. I actually predicted SMU to win this game. I'm in a college football. Uh, how do I phrase this? A, a poll, not a poll, like a, a pick em. And I actually picked SMU to upset Louisville. Kevin Jennings, their quarterback, stud. Stud, uh, uh, he's so good. Diamond in the rough. Louisville needs to regroup. I know I mentioned this. They need to regroup fast. That at ass. They fall out completely out of the top 25. I think SMU is a top 20 team in the country. They're 25 now. Listen, they're just explosive. Like, I know they've had some troubles, but they play BYU, and everybody thought BYU was bad. And look at BYU now. They're, I think they're 15th in the poll. This is a good team. Iowa took on Ohio State, and again, Ohio State is the best team in the country that not enough people are talking about. We're talking all this stuff about the best teams in the SEC, and for good reason. But again, Ohio State's the number one. I think they're the number two team in the country for a reason. Auburn took on Georgia. Again, Carson Beck needs to get off against better teams to faster starts. The slow start against Alabama is the reason they lost that game. They had a slow start against Auburn again. Auburn kind of sucks, so it doesn't matter as much, but you still have to go to Texas. You got a really tough schedule. You want to win some of these games that you, you might not be favored in anymore. It starts with you. Ole Miss took on South Carolina. I mean, the st- moral of the story for this team is you have to play a full four quarters against good teams ASAP. You don't, you're going to lose. They didn't play a full four quarters against Kentucky. What happens? They lose. Indiana took on Northwestern. Again, wasn't necessarily as close as the, as the score indicated. Um, but Indiana being the first bowl eligible team in the country, they're 6-0, and was definitely not on my bingo card. Kurt Signetti has that team rolling. I don't, you know, I don't think they're going to make a playoff run, but 
I don't think nine, maybe 10 wins is out of the question, which is kind of insane for Indiana coming to the season. Next up, we got to talk about this game. Alabama, Vanderbilt. Alabama's defense, we'll start with them really quickly. Their defense has to play at a higher level, ASAP. 40 points to Vanderbilt. I don't care how good you think Vanderbilt is. That's unacceptable. Un you, there's no way you get up more points to Vanderbilt than Georgia. Vanderbilt, tip of the cap. Diego Pavia is nails. Bro has massive fucking balls. In Vanderbilt, they're not a pushover anymore. You really got to lock in. I'm so glad they used that Saban clip as motivation. It's really cool to see Vanderbilt win this game. And listen, I'm not an SEC hater, but I'm sick of the SEC being shoved down our fin throats. And it's good to see teams like Vanderbilt. Again, they are an SEC team, but it's good to see the, the bottom feeders of the SEC kind of take it to the top level teams. Clemson took out Florida State. Um, the fact that this game wasn't a 20 point win for Clemson is a victory for Florida State at this point. I mean, this season is just unraveling. It's, I mean, it's over. I, I would be shocked if Florida State won more than like one more game, if they hadn't even won another one. Utah State, Boise State, it's easy. Ash and Jenny, I already talked about them. Best running back in country. Easily the best running back in the country by a country mile. It's not even close. There's nothing else to talk about with this team. He's a stud. And then we have three straight unranked top 11 upsets. Tennessee, Arkansas. Tennessee needs to figure out the offense fast. They played really well on offense against really shit teams. The moment they got the SEC play, everything started to slow down. And it's not a good look. Because you still have to take you have to take on Alabama, and I'm pretty sure you have to take on Georgia. I don't know Tennessee's full schedule off the top of my head. Playing in Arkansas at Finn Fayetteville, it's proof that winning on the road in the in general is tough, but in the SEC is so hard. And this is just a, a bigger microcosm of this whole season, but this is starting to feel like 2007, and it's awesome. It's so cool to see this season like kind of unplaying, unfolding the way it is with all this chaos. Michigan took on Washington. The passing offense has continued to be the problem. They threw out Jack Tuttle. They had Alex Zorgi in there. For, I, I just don't understand how this passing offense is just so inept. I mean, Washington showed a lot of heart coming back in this fourth quarter, and, and they're nowhere near the team they were last year. I mean, it's not even close. They're not a pushover. They're still a good team. We're going to get to see them play Iowa this week. I think they're on the road. Not going to be easy, but if they can win that one, they're going to be – I mean, I don't think they're going to win more than eight games, but listen, they lost, like, their entire team. For them to come out in a new conference, in, in a better conference, win eight games, not nothing to scoff at for Washington and Jetfish. I believe it's Jetfish. I forgot who – yeah, I think it's Jetfish. I forgot who the coach for Washington is now. USC took on Minnesota. Same thing. USC's offense is not the same as it's been the years past. It's been tough to adapt, right? The defense has been good, but the offense you just goes through spurts and ups and downs, and that's the problem with this team. Minnesota is no slouch. They can still play spoiler. Again, winning on the road, we've talked about this, this entire video. It's hard to do. Baylor versus Iowa State, not really much to talk about. Baylor made it interesting in that first half, but Iowa State's going to win the Big 12. Right, to me, they're the best team in the Big 12, and if it's not them, it's BYU. Really cool to see Iowa State uh, be the big brother in the state of Iowa for the first time in a while. Miami Cal, we can talk all we want about these calls and all this shit, but at the end of the day, Cal was up 25 points in the second half. It's unacceptable to lose this game. Their defense down the stretch, especially in the fourth quarter, they might as well have been playing flag football. I don't want to talk about anything else. I, I'm sorry. It sucks. I like Miami, but it would have been really cool to see Cal pull that upset off, but you're not going to win gameplay like that. That was, that was pathetic. We're going to start the top 25 teams. We're going to go 25 up. SMU, 25. I think they go 11-1. They don't really play a tough schedule. I think their toughest game left on their schedule is at Pitt. I think they lose that one. I, you know, someone has to lose it. I mean, their offense is really good. Logan Parr, a guy I didn't really talk about. He's a right guard. And he's a stud. Um, the defense, obviously, to me, is a major question mark. They give up 42 points to TCU. TCU just lost to Houston. Houston might be the worst team in the Power Four. So, to me, the defense has to pick it up. But I still think they it can finish 11-1. I think there's because these conferences are so big, you're going to see a lot of teams end up with these 10-2s, and 11-1s, and 12-0s. and 0s. However, one of those teams is not going to be Michigan. Michigan, to me, I think they're going to go 6-6. Six and six. You're already 4-2. and two. You play Illinois. You play Oregon. You play Indiana. You play Ohio State. You're telling me they're going to win any of those games? If they are, it's going to be Indiana. It's going to be Illinois. They're not going to beat Oregon. They're definitely not going to beat Ohio State. But for the sake of it, fuck it. I think they're going to lose all four of them, and they're going to go 6-6. Six and six. I understand you have all this defensive talent. You have Will Johnson, Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant. Offensively, Colson Loveland and Donovan Edwards. But their offense is just so anemic. It, it, it's so inept. It's unreal. And at the end of the day, if you want to win games, you have to get better there. And they haven't. They haven't shown it. So I, I just don't believe in them. Speaking of Illinois, I think Illinois goes 11-1. They have a really easy schedule down the stretch. I think they're going to lose to Oregon. I think Oregon comes to Champaign, but it's not going to matter to me. I think they're going to compete for the Big Ten Championship just based on their record. On their record, excuse me. But yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Illinois. Pitt, um, I think they're going to go 11-1. Pitt, they're going to take down SMU, but they're going to play Clemson. I don't think they're going to be Clemson. The rest of their schedule looks pretty uh, manageable. They're going to compete for an ACC championship, but I still think Clemson is going to take them down. Missouri, another team, they dropped all the way to 21. Deservedly so. They got absolutely throttled by Texas A&M. Um, I don't think they're going to fall too far. I think they're going to go 9-3. and three. They lost Texas A&M. They're going to lose to Alabama, and they're going to lose to Oklahoma. I know I've been ragging on Oklahoma all, all video, but 
even with Luther Burden being Luther Burden, their defense is a major question mark, and they have to, it has to continue to get better or else they're going to get killed against these great teams. Kansas State, first Big 12 team we're going to talk about, I think they're going to go 11-1. and They play a pretty easy schedule down the stretch. I think they're going to lose to Iowa State. Um, I think they're going to compete for a Big 12 title. The Big 12, again, wide open, but Kansas State has been super consistent. I don't, again, 11-1, and one, I don't actually know, because I think Iowa State, I think BYU might win out. We'll talk about that in a minute. But 11-1 and one is nothing to slouch at. Oklahoma, we talked about them. They're already, I believe, 4-1. I think they're going to go 7-5. I don't think they're going to win the Red River rivalry this week. I don't think they're going to beat Ole Miss. I don't think they're going to beat Alabama. And I don't think they're going to beat LSU. So that puts them at 7-5. and five. I understand they have Danny Stutzman and Billy Bowman on defense, but offensively, it has been nothing. They have had no consistency on offense. And that, in the SEC, again, I think they play the toughest schedule in the SEC. There's, I, I just can't see them winning any of those games, and that puts them at 7-5. and five. Indiana, I think they're going to go 11-1. and one. Like, The only loss I can see on the schedule is, is Ohio State. They're going to compete for a Big Ten championship. I don't know how the tiebreaker and all that stuff's going to shake out, but yeah, they're, they're, they're a much better team, and their schedule's manageable. Like, they don't really play any tough teams down the stretch outside of Ohio State. I don't think they're winning that one. But yeah, I'm really impressed by Indiana and Kurt Signetti. Boise State, I think they're going to go undefeated the rest of the season. I think they're going to go 11-1. Ash and Jenny, we talked about him ad nauseum. He's a stud. He's the best offensive player in college football. To me, the question is the defense. Can they continue to play at a high level for them? the Broncos to compete? If they can, they're going to run the table, win the Mountain West, and get the big, or excuse me, the group of five auto bid, which would be so cool. Next up, Utah. I think they're going to go 9-3. and They already lost the game. I think they're going to lose to BYU and Iowa State. Sorry, Utah fans, you're not winning the Holy War. Obviously, tight end Brant, uh, excuse me, Brant Cuthie, he's a stud, but the defense has to play better. Cam Rising has to get healthy. There's just a lot of question marks for this team. But Kyle Whittingham has these teams competitive in a lot of these games. So I still think they're going to shake out and win most of these games, but I don't think they'd be BYU or Iowa State. A&M, right? They're already 4-1, I believe, or 5-1, and one, something like that. They play LSU and they play Texas. Unfortunately, I think they lose both those games. There's some other games I think they're going to win, but I think they're going to go to 9-3. and three. Listen, 9-3 and three in Mike Elko's first year, nothing to slouch at. Obviously, Nick Scorton's a stud, but the offense needs to get more consistent. We've seen some injuries to Connor Wiegman. Can he stay healthy? Yada, yada, yada. 9-3, and three, you're not a slouch. You're a stud. And if you're Mike Elko, that's more than what you asked for coming into the season. BYU, I think they go undefeated. I think this team goes 12 and other schedules light. You do have Utah. I don't think they're going to have any problem with Utah. Um, to me, it's can they avoid a letdown. It's really tough to win with expectations. And they finally have expectations. LSU, I think they go 9-3. and three. They're already 4-1. and one. They have to play Ole Miss and Alabama. Unfortunately for them, I don't think they win either of those. Uh, they do have a lot of talent, right? We've talked about this at nauseum. Will Campbell, Mason Taylor, Emory Jones, defensively led by Harold Perkins. The defense still has to get better. Right? That's where the question marks are. 13th team in the country, if they can sneak out an upset over Ole Miss or Alabama, you put yourself in the competition, or the, excuse me, in the conversation for playoff worth. Notre Dame, I think they go 11-1. Their schedule is cake. Army and Navy are going to be tough. I still want to see more out of them, right? They haven't, to me, they haven't proven themselves the way a team like Boise State has, and they don't have that top-end talent. Um, Notre Dame does, right? You have Benjamin, defensively, Benjamin Morrison, Xavier Watts, Howard Cross. Offensively, you have Mitchell Evans. The offense is the issue. The passing game has been up and down. It's trending up, but Riley Leonard still has to figure that out if they want to compete. You make them one-dimensional, that's how you beat them. Iowa State, final Big 12 team we're going to talk about. I think they're going to go 12-0. They don't play BYU. They play Kansas State. I think they're going to go undefeated. Their schedule is light, and I think if they can avoid a letdown, that's the big question, obviously. One of them between Iowa State and BYU is going to make the playoff and get a first-round bye, which is awesome. Clemson, they figured it out. They're, I think they're going to go 11-1. Again, they just beat Florida State. They really don't They don't play Miami. They're, I don't think their schedule is really that tough down the stretch. Barrett Carter, Peter Woods, incredible. The offense needs improved, but it'll be interesting to see how it holds up, especially once you get into the back half of the schedule, once you play teams that are better. You do play Pitt. That's not going to be an easy game at all. You play Louisville. It's going to be interesting to see how Clemson does down the stretch. Ole Miss, they already, they're four and one. You have one more game, but I think you're going to lose to Georgia. Georgia, they just have Lynn Kiffin's number. Obviously, defensively, Walter Nolan. Offensively, Trey Harris, Jackson Dart. Defense has improved. The offense has been a little inconsistent, especially against Kentucky. We saw that. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting. I think they're, they're still a top 10 team. They're still one of the cream of the crop in the SEC. It should be interesting to see how this season plays out for Ole Miss. Tennessee, you're what, 4-1, and 5-1? One, and one? You play Alabama, you play Georgia. Unfortunately, we haven't seen anything that would lead us to believe that Tennessee's offense is going to show up in either of those games. So I think they lose both. James Pierce is a stud. The defense is incredible. But the offense needs to step it up against real competition or Tennessee is screwed. Next up, we got Alabama. They play not necessarily a cake schedule, but I don't see a team the rest of the way that can beat them. Um, the talent on this team is incredible, right? On the offensive line alone, I'm going to read this. Parker Brails, footed center, both guards in Jaden Roberts, Tyler Booker. You have Jalen Milrow in defensively, Malachi Moore and Deontay Lawson. Defense has to step it up against SEC competition. We just saw Vanderbilt just torch them, like torch them. Um, but I think they go 11-1 down the stretch. I think this lights a fire under them. Miami, I think this team goes 12-0. Their schedule is cake. This The ACC, the, the teams in the ACC, they got a super easy schedule this year, the top ones, especially since Florida State sucks ass. Obviously, offensively, Restrepo. 
Damian Martinez, Cam Ward. Defensively, Ruben Bain is a stud. The team has the pieces. Can they avoid a letdown? That's the question mark. Next up, we're talking about Georgia. They're, what, 4-1 and one right now? Uh, they still have to go to Austin. They're not winning. I don't think they're winning that game. So I think they're going to finish 10-2. and two. They have a lot of pieces. They're not going to miss the playoffs. Um, obviously, Carson Beck, I'm reading this off. Tate Rattler, Jalen Fairchild, I wrote down Malachi Starks, and Michael Williams for defense. The team has first-round draft picks, five-star talent, loaded everywhere. Defense needs to show up, though. Like, objectively, the defense needs to show up against elite teams. Alabama absolutely eviscerated them in that first half. That is not going to be able to happen against Texas. So that's over immediately. Penn State. Right now, they're undefeated. Uh, unfortunately, they have to play Ohio State. I don't think that they're going to beat Ohio State at all. Puts them at 11-1. and They're still going to make the playoff, in my head, for the first time in James Franklin's career. Defensively, Kevin Winston, Abdul Carter. You have Nick Singleton, Tyler Warren. You got pieces everywhere. I didn't even mention Drew Aller, Catron Allen. But just to me, the consistency, they just need to continue to improve on that end. They do that, they're going to be a tough out in the playoffs. We got two more Big Ten teams in this top three. Oregon. I don't think that I think they're going to lose to Ohio State, too. Unfortunately, you play Ohio State, not many teams are going to beat them. Offensively, Dylan Gabriel, Tess Johnson, you have Evan Stewart. Defensively, um, who am I forgetting? Jabbar Muhammad. On your offensive line, you have Josh Connerly. Like, the offense is loaded, but your defense has to continue to play to a high level. And the team just, it feels weird in a way, like, the offense just isn't as consistent as you'd like it to be. Ohio State, I mean, what more can I say about this team? I think they're going to feed it. I'm read. I'm just going to read. I wrote down eight names for this team. Offensively alone, Quinchai Judkins, Travion Henderson, Emeka Agbuka, and on the offensive line, Donovan Jackson, going to be a stud in the NFL. Defensively, Caleb Downs, Jack Sawyer, Don, nope, Tyler Williams, and Denzel Burke. Like, you got studs everywhere. Can you avoid disappointment? You've done so, so far. This game against Oregon this week is going to be, it might be the game of the year, because it's in Eugene. It's going to be incredible. Unfortunately, the number one team in the country lies in Austin. It's always this, but they're going to go undefeated. Uh, Georgia's the only team on this schedule that I think can really beat them. Maybe A&M, if they catch them off guard. Kelvin Banks, Quinn Ewers, the offense is incredible. Can they avoid a letdown? That's the question. And then I wrote down four games to look forward to going forward into week seven. We're already in week seven, man. I can't believe this. In week seven. Damn. Utah plays Arizona State on a Friday night. It's a Pac-12. Nope, not a Pac-12. You thought I said that, but it's a Big 12. Showdown. You have the Red River rivalry. Texas, Oklahoma. It's going to be incredible. Those games are always fun. Ohio State goes to Oregon. Potentially. I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it early. The game of the year. And then Ole Miss goes to LSU. You, neither of these teams really want to get another loss. It's going to be tough. Uh, it's been a while since I did one of these, but I really enjoy doing this. It's just fun to talk about college football. I've been writing all these notes. I was going to do this before this past week. Glad I didn't because I was going to sound even stupider than I'll probably sound this week. Um, but yeah, if you like this, make sure to leave a comment down below. If you want to see me do something else, yada, yada, you know what to do. Like and subscribe. Any YouTube thinks you're going to like this video. Find out if they're right.